So should you buy a home in 2024 or are home prices going to crash tumbling down 50% <laughs> and you're going to have an amazing discount, interest rates are going to be low yeah. and you're going to be the best person buying yeah. the best house in the world right now. Or maybe, maybe, or maybe we're the indicator, you know, that's one thing that I always think about when we have these topics. Maybe what we're saying is the opposite because <laughs> I think we've been talking about since 2022 around there, like not only us, but every thumbnail on YouTube is like... Housing housing's crash. about to crash housing tomorrow. Crash. They're crashing, but crash, have housing. they? If anything, they stayed the same or gotten higher. Let, let's look at the data. Let's look at the data. <laughs> if, is a housing crash going to happen? The data doesn't lie. At the end of the day, emotions are emotions, but data doesn't lie. So this data right here shows different. It's, I know it's a little hard to see, but there's four different graphs. On the left over here is a housing inventory in Texas. Texas as a state, the whole. Now, back this shaded line, every time there's a shaded line, it's a recession. 2020 COVID was a mini recession. So that's what that is. During this time, housing inventory was around this level. I believe it says 100 or over 100,000. And we went really down. So what happens when supply goes down is very basic. Mm -hmm. If supply goes down and people are fighting, even if it's the same amount of people fighting, but it's a lot less houses, the prices are going to shoot, especially because interest rates went down too. Mm -hmm. And it was just normal. And what happened? supply went super down and it started to pick up again and then it went super down again and then finally supply is actually surpassing the norm in texas but now here's the thing real estate is very 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 it's not national slow. it's slow but it's also like what could be happening in one state could be totally different in another state even cities even within cities even within counties like it like let's just look at uh, florida it's similar to texas it's following a similar pattern it went really down it's going up it's reaching the normal levels which it's just normal it hasn't gone you know 2008 levels yet but then orange county this is in california orange county is still very low supply. its supply is so low it would have to 3x in order for it to be normal like today yeah today <laughs> 3x the supply for it to be normal not to be a housing crash i mean maybe prices might dip a little or it will just be less competitive same thing with LA County. I mean, I mean, all of California, it's pretty similar to Orange County. So you can get a comparison. So it's, should you buy a home in 2024? This is the inventory. Yeah, from, from, from what, what it looks here is just, it looks like during the pandemic, a lot of people maybe moved from expensive places like California and they were able to work remote. And we saw that on social media and TV and YouTube where everybody was moving to Texas, moving to Florida because housing is cheap. There's a lot of housing and I can work remote. But now it looks like They're those are back. the most unstable and California looks like the most stable out of all of those. If I had to bet which one's going to feel it first, it looks like Texas is a little more and then, then Florida. Yeah. yeah. And then within obviously the, those two states, if this is the average or whatever, then mm -hmm. you can imagine there's some cities within those uh, yeah. states that are doing really, really this bad. This is average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um there's a lot of states like the east coast west coast is doing pretty good like mm -hmm. california new york is like still holding its value i think new york is one of the states the few states that is actually still holding its value it's pretty so well condensed the city so you condensed know? not People enough work supply there. you can't really build anymore you can only build up basically and that's yeah. kind of what's happening in california where supply. specifically southern california because mm -hmm. fresno modesto like northern central Super different. You could probably find houses for a hundred, two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So all of California is not expensive, but um, you know, right now we're at a very the extreme low. Of how many people are actually applying for houses? So if they cut rates, then what does that mean is going to happen? I don't know because I'm, I'm, you know, back in the two thousand eight crisis nationally. Yes, it was really bad, but there were still some regions that actually went up in value mm -hmm. and some that tanked i think vegas was one of the worst ones that tanked a lot so I, it's very regional mm -hmm. but like that's a question we get you know like we're gonna have a home ownership fair in the city of baldwin park soon in the month of august it's right here locally locally here in california and that's a question we get a lot of people that ask us should you buy a home should i buy a home should i wait you know i keep seeing videos that say you know house prices are going to crash and I mean, yeah, they could crash, they could go up. But when I say crash, I'm not saying like it goes down 90%. No, five. Correction. 5%. Five I wouldn't you know? say crash. I would say yeah. more of a correction. Yeah. And, and these are some of the signs that, you know, typically, you know, when people are looking to buy a house, uh, it's important for you to know that you're ready to buy. Okay. Yeah. But historically looking, even though uh, a lot of us around our age want to get a house, what sucks is we're facing a time almost like 2007, if you see this chart here, 
even the nineties, which it was the dot com era and all that, where housing affor- affordability is hitting a very, very uh, extreme levels where a lot of us seem like that's almost like a fantasy of one day owning a house, especially like you said, if you live in California, if you live somewhere else, maybe it's a little different, but we talked about in the previous episode, how here in California, you have to make almost close to $300,000 to live comfortably in a yeah. house. Yeah. And I talked, I've talked, I talked, I remember the, the, a couple of days ago, I talked to someone that covers this. I won't mention their name, but they cover this on YouTube and they talk about this mm-hmm. and you know, He's one of those people that talks about crash, 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 housing crash. <laughs> but I asked him specifically about California, Southern California. And he's like, you know what? It's different. At the end of the day, you guys don't have enough supply. I mean, unless you guys had a huge influx of like yeah. people, I guess, you know, that's where illegal immigration, mm-hmm. where people say, you know, they want to cut it. And they, 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 they're, they're, they're pointing fingers at them and saying they're the reasons why, you know, housing is so expensive. But I mean, mm-hmm. they can't even buy the house. I mean, it's too expensive if citizens can't buy them. They have, you know, actual stable mm-hmm. job and they're not making minimum wage. Yeah. Why do you think someone like that would be able to afford it? So, well, all this to say that um, it's very regional. It depends where you're at. But these are some important, you know, things you should look to. Signs that you should look to if you're going to buy. So number one thing, because if you're looking to buy a house, um, a lot of people tell you, you know, those realtors that are terrible, they say, you know, just date the rate, b- marry, uh, marry the, the house. house, date the rate. Oh, in a year, don't worry about it. Just stay <laughs> in this house. And in one year, interest rates are going to go back to 2%. And they buy a house thinking that, hey, man, right now it's only, it's making up 50 or 60% of my income. But I know, you know, I'm going to get a raise and the interest rates are going to drop. Like So they're hoping. Yeah, they're hope. You know, like never buy anything on hope. If you're going to buy a house, that's a long-term commitment. Now, do you have to stay 30 years? No. Um, uh, most people that buy their first house, you know, stay, you know, seven years, sometimes 10 years. It just depends, you know, on you. But you have to think long-term, you know, minimum five to seven years. You're going to be staying in that community. Mm-hmm. Um, you want that stability. You have enough money for down payment. You have enough money for emergency. Maintenance. For maintenance, for initial repairs. Maybe there's initial things you have to repair. Or even health issues. Not even even about the house, but what about you? What if something happens where either your spouse or you lose your job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of reasons. And that's why it's super important. You know, it's always recommended. I know um, when the bank asks you, so how much you want to get approved for? And technically, there's some banks. I think even FHA, you know, like those are the first time homebuyer, you know, basically programs that most homebuyers do. They only put like 3% down payment. They end up getting approved like almost 60% of their net net income. So it'd be like 40 something, 50% of their gross. And that's insane because they're they're told this lie that, you know, no, don't worry. Interest rates are going to go down. It's not that easy, especially if you you put a small down payment. And if there is a correction, now you have to pay the difference in order for you to refinance. Yeah. Yeah. It's... It, it sucks because it's like a lot of us our age, we're in graduated college, we're in our career, and you would have thought, like, my parents got a house around my age, maybe it's time for me to get a house. But if it doesn't make sense to you, just almost don't stress about it. Don't feel the pressure. It's okay. Like we, Joshua said this in the other day, rent is only buying you patience. You're going to build that income so you can be able to have a higher down payment when you buy that house it's like me i would love to buy a house but me and my wife are thinking of maybe having a kid soon so if that is the case that means maybe one of us won't be able to work as much because we're gonna have a newborn so maybe having a crazy high bill is gonna cause stress in our relationship uh health maybe not be able to give the best to our baby so it just depends where you are in life and what are you going to do in the next two three even five years because yeah. buying a house is a lot of stress it's yeah not, it's not like buying a car car is stressful but a house is like next level stress yeah, it's next level stress and although it's important to know where the state of the economy is you ask most people about their house i think that's the last thing they were thinking they were thinking about like if they're ready personally, I know it's important. Um, <laughs> oh, the state, the economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, definitely, it's no. important. But most people, it's rare. if they're ready and they feel they're ready, then they'll do it. If they're not ready, these are some things. All right. So if you're thinking, am I ready? Am I not? If you have a bad credit score, low credit score, off the bat, you're gonna get screwed over with a high interest rate. They might not even approve you. Mm-hmm. So those are basic things. If you have bad credit score, you don't pay things on time. You just for whatever reason, or maybe something happened where it was a mistake and it dropped your score. Fix it. If you have a lot of debt. You know, you're talking about personal loans, credit card debt, car payments that are like 
basically 30% of your income. That's what your house is supposed to be, which I know a lot of people that are in that. <laughs> you have no savings. Your income is very unstable. You're in OnlyFans, right? You made it 50,000 <laughs> one, ma- one month and you know now yeah. you're making $100 this next month, you know? Yeah. Especially, let's just say both you and your wife uh, or your spouse are, you know, uh, business owners and there's no stability in the income. Banks are going to see that. They're not going to approve you on what you made this month. They're going to approve you on your last two years and get an average. So it's really important most of the time. If you don't know what it means to be a homeowner, which at the end of the day, no one's fully, fully ready because no one's ready for the unexpected. But like, it's not just down payment. It's closing costs, renovations, uh, freaking inspections, taxes, and taxes, fees. Yeah. insurances, fees, et cetera. There's so much stuff that goes with it. Moving. We're not trying to scare you. Yeah, moving. It's a couple thousand. If you, Especially if you're moving from one house to another. That's a lot of furniture. Mm-hmm. So know all this. It's not impossible, but everyone will do it in their own timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and talking about housing, it is also affecting rents. And that's one thing that a lot, I mean, in California, a lot of people rent. It's like me, I'm renting. And I thought maybe there was going to be correction on rent as well, not only just on houses, on rent, because I was reading online, like this article says that a breaking uh, new record where only 47% of the new construction apartments built in the fourth quarter of 2023 we're renting within three months of completion. It's the second lowest share in at least 12 years. So you see this chart here. Usually apartments rent, you know, they're filled up 60% of the time. Or maybe even in the pandemic, we filled up 75% of the rents that were available in the U.S. were rented. That's why prices went really high. But right now we're getting back to 47% of the new, I mean, of apartments that are being filled up. So... I thought, in my opinion, that was going to cause a little correction in the apartments. But what happened in my situation where I live in the apartments is there was a lot of openings. And then out of nowhere, the apartment offered uh, the apartments to be filled up by Section 8. So Section 8 housing. So that affected the prices. And it went from being around 25, 2,500 a month to right now, currently, the same apartment that I have is 3,200. So it's like, I really thought we were going to have a little correction in the apartment. So even housing affects apartments. And that's the thing. If we do hit a recession or something. 3,200 for one bedroom. Yeah, same as mine. What is a three bedroom? What do you think? Oh, four. Damn. Four. That's why it's like. That's to rent. That's to rent. So it's like housing is affecting people want to buy a house, but even renters, you know. But there is some hope because people aren't like who can afford a four thousand dollar one like four thousand two bedroom imagine a family yeah. that's 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 expensive and even like a one bedroom like where we are at we were thinking of moving but when we saw the rest of the area it's like 33 i mean three thousand three hundred, almost four thousand and it's just insane how expensive it is this is california and if you want to move out here that's that's kind of like the prices that you're probably going to expect to see on apartments of course there's differences because you could get a a simple apartment but we're looking like somewhere nice because again like i said earlier we want to have a kid so we want to have at least a place that we can be comfortable and relaxed living in yeah you don't want that neighbor that blasts music till two in the morning that's where i'm at right now (laughs) you can't have babies there yeah yeah yeah, you'll struggle yeah and then we have to go up the stairs but yeah yeah you know the the home ownership renting all that like like my brother said you know like renting is not bad it's buying you patience most people just don't have that patience not ready and i know before we move uh, on to like the last thing i wanted to cover you know one thing that's also affecting the the you know the housing market is airbnb and how it's taking over yeah. literally cities yeah that's like places like new york they, they didn't ban it but i think the rule or the the restrictions i think it was that you have to be living in that unit or they have to rent long term like 30 days or more something like oh, that. oh okay the, the that people, makes sense the people yeah, yeah, yeah. which is very rare it's like when i rent airbnb max like two weeks you know we rent it out or we're moving to different spots within those two weeks so yeah that affects housing because if you see this chart here this is in san diego and this just shows you how many houses that should be available for people who want to live in them, families or whoever. They're actually Airbnbs. Look at that. Like this whole strip is basically Airbnb. 
everywhere here. San Diego is one of the most uh, popular markets that uh, the housing market, the houses have gone up a lot. And well, this super is why expensive. Yeah, it has a lot to do with it. It's because it's not people that are buying it that live there, but it's people that are using it as investment because people travel to you know San Diego for vacation homes. So you want to see a housing market crash? Ban all Airbnb. That might cause something. There's there's uh, I've been seeing rumors or tweets or posts on social media that say that California might do similar to what New York did because. Yeah, if housing is so expensive here in California, and like we saw in the previous chart, the inventory is not there, you know, Airbnb might be what's causing a lot of this stress in, in housing. So if you see here, yeah, yeah, that definitely is. Yeah, that's insane. That's a, that's a lot of little red dots. And that's that's those are all people that have Airbnb. So they're probably a lot of boomers, people that yeah, and, have second homes, third homes. And people that are buying house, they're competing against investors that want to do this to houses. So it's like, it's a really hard market out there. And now think about, you know, the first time home buyer that maybe has, you know, just enough for a 3% down payment, a couple thousand left in the bank. Of course, you're going to get bid out. Like, no, yeah. one, you're not going to win that house. That's, it's, that's why it's really hard, especially in California. But, you know, there is some assistance. There's programs like, you know, here in California, I'm sorry if you're in another state, um, the, the city of La Puente has this program where they'll give you up to $200,000 in a zero interest loan. And depending on, you know, how big your family is or, um, you know, how many people live in your family and your income, there's income limits. But yeah, up to 200000 that you could use towards down payment, closing costs. But for the, you have to move to the city of La Puente? Yeah, this is specifically for the city of La Puente. There's other things over here that says rules. You got, you got to take this home buyer class, et cetera. But um, how did you find out about this information? You though? just literally look up home buyer, first time home buyer assistance programs. So maybe this doesn't apply to you. This is all just different programs. There's one here in the city of Santa Ana. They do something similar, but they give you $120,000, zero interest. This is, so this is a grant or this is This like is a, a, loan. a loan. I don't know the ru like the complete rules, but some of these loans eventually. So you have to pay it back. There's two things yeah. that they, they'll do. They defer the loan. So what it means is like until you sell the house, that's when you pay back. Mm. Or or sometimes what happens if you live in the house long enough, they'll, it'll become a grant. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Not all the time. That happens sometimes. That's pretty sick. $200,000 if you're able. That would be sick. But hey, it's 0% interest. So it's. I don't that's, want to say that's it's, huge. it's free that's money, huge. but in a way like you don't, that doesn't exist right now. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it is, it's amazing because then let's say if you stay there long term, your house will go up that and more eventually. What do they consider a first time buyer? People that haven't bought a home in the last three years. Or, oh, yeah. So it's a lot of people that can. Most people would qualify yeah. if, here's the thing though. Let's say you buy your house five years ago and right now you have a house and you want to buy a new house. You wouldn't qualify unless you sell that house and you go, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't be someone that has multiple houses. Oh, I'm a first time home Airbnb buyer. investor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically if, the yeah. easiest thing is if you never bought a house, you for sure. If this is your very first house, you for sure will qualify. That's pretty sick. Yeah, and there's a lot of other programs. Habitat for LA, it's the city of Santa Ana. There's this bank that offers one. So there's a lot of different programs. And this is just right here in my, not my city, the county that we're in. Where you're in, maybe there's some assistance LA, programs Orange as well. LA, Orange County. Yeah, LA and Orange County right here. So yeah. Messages, if you want more information, we could help you connect to these resources. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. But yeah, yeah. so with the, harm, the question, you know, the million dollar question that we asked in the beginning, is the housing market going to crash? Uh, real estate is very regional. So like what can happen in one city? will be different from another neighboring city. And so do your due diligence, do your, like at the end of the day, if you're ready and you're prepared and you find a good deal, don't keep waiting. Cause by you waiting, maybe it could, you know, it's not really helping you. It's hurting you more than helping you. But if you're not ready, renting is uh, buying you patience. It's not yeah. bad to rent. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah. And don't see a house as an investment, you know, cause I think that's, that's the thing. A lot of people now have that mindset that I'm gonna buy a house, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I think yeah. that's why. You would have yeah. to sell it in order yeah. to be a millionaire. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. But also, like, if you want to see what's going to happen in the housing market, also pay attention not only just on inventory or on interest rates, but unemployment. Because as soon as people start losing their job, you know, that's when they're going to start losing their car, their They houses. won't care about those low interest rates at that point. They're yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going to have to sell this. So be cautious of that. You know, don't get into a house not knowing whether or not your job is safe. Yeah, that's right. The most important thing applies, you know, just to finish off is having an emergency fund. Stuff happens. And like, even if it's like you move into your first house, 
great a month later something breaks another thing breaks another thing breaks you know you break you break right you break <laughs> at work or you so you play soccer and you hurt your leg or i don't know stuff can happen and now you can't work and you're the breadwinner so it's you gotta have some sort of like uh like it's the investing you have stop loss you know if it hits a certain point stop it there same thing with you know this you gotta have preparation and be prepared for anything to happen don't be freaked out you know oh my god the world's gonna end but you need to have some sort of planning and preparation yeah so we'll see you guys in the next episode and hopefully the housing market doesn't crash by the next episode we'll see you in the next one